there have been an insane amount of things that I really wish I knew on World of Tanks console and today I'm going to share you five things that you should know about World of Tanks before you have to make the mistake yourself. Obviously I've been playing for over 22,000 games, I've played in all variety of different tanks within the game um, and hopefully I'll be able to give you a good overview as to the things that you should really be trying to learn and what you probably shouldn't be trying to learn within the game. If you want to learn and develop as a player within the game then sometimes you have to pick the right tank at the end of where you're trying to get to. So. For the most part, learning the game can be a very much um, specific to the tank line that you're playing and so picking the right tech tree line that you begin with uh, that allows you then to move on and progress your gameplay by kind of showing you the various different aspects that you need to think of when playing World of Tanks by not just rushing towards the Maus because it says it's got the most armor within the game. And I think that this is really where um, the majority of players go wrong. They instantly, they come on, they see, oh, the Maus, that, that's going to be good. It's got the most armor in the game and therefore I'm going to be able to be a real boss. And if I use that armor well, I'm going to be able to do so much. But in the majority of situations when you're new to the game you don't understand the core mechanics and so and even when you're not necessarily like new to the game so for more veteran players and stuff like that you can still apply the same logic where if you're trying to get better sometimes it's not necessarily how hard you row but actually what vehicle you're traveling in or what boat for that metaphor um, so sometimes it's better to swap the tank line to learn the game um, and therefore then you can get the basics or the core knowledge improve upon that and then you can move to a different tank now in terms of how you can apply this within the game because yeah that's great information eclipse but where can you actually put that uh, when trying to actually play the game and be able to use it so that you do get better well first things first I'm going to give you a couple of tech tree lines that I think are pretty good that are solid and you'll be able to learn quite a lot now the first one is the IS-7 and the object 277 if you go for this these two lines or the uh, Soviet tier 10 heavy tanks here you can have some really really amazing games whilst also learning some of the core mechanics especially if you go for something like the t10 instead of the object 257 you'll learn a more medium heavy play style and especially as you go towards the object 277 and finally actually get that tank you'll be able to kind of appreciate what it's like to be some somewhat of a medium that has a little bit more um give than a medium tank would because you know as a heavy medium you basically have good armor comparatively to something like a leopard one for example or some of the more paper t62a's and stuff like that so this is what i kind of will want to just batter into you is that sometimes it's good if you're trying to get better to pick a line that enables you to learn the core mechanics for example if i want to learn how to use armor i'm not going to pick the panzer 7 because for the most part it's a very novel and unique tank and you don't want to pick a unique tank if you're trying to apply it to the entirety of your game because essentially you want to learn how to angle how to side scrape how to do all of these things by what i mean by that is if we swap over to tanks.gg i can show you in specific Swapping over to tanks.gg you can see basically the armor model of the tanks within the game albeit these are the PC values of the armor so they are slightly different um, but essentially they're giving you the key um, things that you need to know so for example if I want to learn how to angle you'll see here that as you like change the angle of your tank the armor values change and this is because in game they're not just what you see as the flat value so you can see here the lower plate impacted armor 150 millimeters now in reality because that that armor has a sloping you you basically have more armor than what it says because if you can imagine throw in a rubber ball at a, a wall essentially it's going to bounce off or it's going to kind of come in at an angle if you want to throw the most force in that rubber ball into that wall you want to be literally perpendicular to it so you're throwing it directly at the flat surface 
If, for example, you throw it right next to the wall and you're throwing it along the wall, it's just going to kind of skim off and you're not really going to do much. Um, and another example would be like if you've ever skimmed st stones, you know, the lower you get to the water and you throw it, it's going to bounce and it's going to keep going. Whereas if you were literally standing in the water and you just throw a rock down into it, it's obviously just going to go straight through. That's because you get more ricochet. Um, and that is exactly what World of Tanks basically do. You can see here as the angle gets steeper it's more likely that your shell is going to hit and it's going to bounce off uh, whereas if you're kind of looking up into it you can see the armor angle changes so this is something i want to drive into you you can use it really really effectively within the game if you're playing tanks like the e100 that are very very flat and have this really nice side armor the one thing that i do want to note is that armor isn't everything and you shouldn't focus everything into learning the armor and learning the weak spots because that kind of leads me into the second point. So what I mean by armor isn't everything and learning all of the weak points isn't everything because I myself, when I first started playing World of Tanks, I thought, right, I'm going to learn all of the weak points of all of the tanks within the game. Well, yeah, that's that's interesting. And you could spend hours and hours and hours literally going through all of the tech tree tanks on tanks.gg learning out the armor model and all of that kind of jazz when realistically what you should just try and focus on is playing the game itself but also remembering that the majority of tanks have the same weak points for example you pick the mouse where's the weakest point on the frontal armor well typically it's the lower plate why is that that's because all tanks lower plates except from a few of them have pretty weak armor values, which means that you can pen far more reliably through these lower plates. Yes, there are differences where maybe the turret armor is slightly weaker than the lower plate or vice versa. Maybe the upper plate is actually better to shoot at. Um, but my point being is that not always should you just be kind of trying to get specifics, because the key majority of kind of where you should invest your time into is actually playing the game and learning the game itself through gameplay and just taking the kind of general approach to armor and the characteristics of armor so that, you know, basically you know that the lower plates of the majority of tanks in the game lower plate being on the mouse there that you just saw uh, for example if we go to the Yeageru we'll see another one this big lower plate at the bottom these are the places that you want to be firing at I mean for another we can take another example let's pick a random USSR uh, tank let's go with the IS-4 for example go to the 3D model what do we have well we've got this upper plate 254 we've got the lower plate which is 230 so the the weakest part of the frontal armor of the IS for is the lower plate so you can see where i'm getting with this basically you want to be aiming at the lower plate for to make it very very simple that's pretty much where you have to aim um, and if you can't see that that's where it becomes kind of you you'll learn the weak points whereby you could shoot the top of the is4's turret um, and there's various different like other weak points that you'll learn along the way for example if we take the kv4 you'll see that the lower plate is actually pretty okay 170 for tier 8 but you've also got this massive cupola on the top so if you can't see the lower plate where do you shoot it and you can't see this bar here then you want to be shooting the cupola of the tank because it has like weaker armor although albeit this is the pc values there are plenty of tanks in the game that have these kind of cupolas which you can easily hit for example on the tortoise another one big big cupola which is weak mostly all cupolas in in the game are weak which means that if you can hit them that will basically mean that you pen and so my whole to kind of conclude this point in general is that don't try and learn all of the specifics where maybe you could hit this tiny little cupola on the right hand side of the tortoise just remember you know the key things lower plate if you can't pen the lower plate because it's somewhat of a niche tank then go for the other weak points which are typically the cupola otherwise try and outplay the tank by going around it or doing something else or maybe sometimes you should just leave the flank because if i'm coming up against an is7 hold down on a ridgeline the or not on a ridgeline but 
hold down in a city map and I'm playing a medium tank sometimes it's just better to leave and that is kind of something uh, that I think is really really important to showcase to you guys. Let's jump back over onto the console so you can see some other things. One thing that I see every new player or maybe not even a new player but someone that just maybe is trying to learn is that typically their equipment consumables or commander loadouts are kind of suboptimal and they don't realize that actually if you're not utilizing all three equipment slots on a tank you're going to be flat out worse than any other tank in the game even if you're taking you know some of the terrible equipment slots that just aren't really usable on your tank then they can severely uh, negatively impact what you're going to be playing like up against if you, for example you come up against the exact same tank with the right equipment setup you will be flat out worse that is how world of tanks works statistics don't change the values don't change unless you put on equipment which boosts them up and if you don't have those boosts you're going to be at a disadvantage and that is flat out it now obviously i understand each piece of equipment will cost you as you can see on screen 500,000 silver or maybe even more depending on what equipment slot it is up to 750,000 for a spool liner now if you play this game regularly if you play enough you'll be able to probably have basically get one and a half million silver now what do you actually spend that kind of equipment money on well if you have any premium tanks within the game i highly recommend you actually put your equipment on your premium tanks first because ultimately they're the ones that are going to earn you credit so if you can perform better in your premium tanks you're going to be able to earn more silver in general which then means you can get another one and a half million silver and you can put equipment on the next tank. Obviously you can see here I've got a ton of silver. You can alternatively just buy silver because that's just how World of Tanks works. But ultimately that is exactly what you want to do. You want to be getting equipment on your tank because it will boost you up in percentages against other people playing the same tank. Similarly your consumables if you are playing you'll be able to see that your enhanced repair kit will basically instantly repair all modules and this is a kind of thing that you will 100% need on your tank in most cases you know you could take the small repair kit but for the 10,000 credits it costs to actually put on you know there's plenty of situations where this has saved me from completely getting destroyed saving me from thousands of damage like taken which means that ultimately i'm going to be able to survive longer i'm going to be able to do more damage and therefore i'm going to be able to earn more silver because i'm playing in the game i'm dealing more damage i'm taking less damage and that is exactly what these kind of consumables do. Most people see it at face value. Oh, it's 10,000 silver that I'm going to have to spend every single game. And that means that I'm going to lose silver every game. Well, no, because these make you perform better, which mean that you earn more silver and mean that you don't get taken out as quickly. So the argument where they go, well, actually, it only works if you've only got like premium time or whatever. It's not necessarily true. I could play without any kind of premium boost, without any kind of season pass boost for the silver amount and still make silver playing in a tier 8 um, tech tree tank as well. So not even a premium tank that you have to pay for or earn or whatever it is. You could still make silver. You just have to ensure that you're playing in the right way. And the one that I would 100% recommend over taking enhanced repair kit is enhanced rations. If you're not taking enhanced rations, I don't know what you're doing because this is the most vital piece of consumable. Increases the crew performance by 15% as the active use and as a passive boost. So that means all of the time you're going to be 10% better and you'll be able to earn 10% more commander XP, which means that the rate at which you're earning commander xp goes up which means that you can then lead on to the next point which is get a nine skill crew so let's assign one oh well i've got plenty of them but for example let's go to the uk because that is what the tank is you can see here that we have plenty of nine skill crews within the game and the key thing with this is that when you get in that extra commander xp what you can do is you can then use your commander to then boost up your tank even further and there are some really really key commander perks that i want to run through in today's video and they are born leader is an essential crew perk 
We also then have um, Sixth Sense. This is a perk that should probably be in the game as standard without even having to apply it as a skill within the game. Um, but there we go, that's Wargaming's decision. Um, and then we also have Rapid Loading. So these are the kind of first three skills that you want to get on every single tank. Sixth Sense works by just basically letting you know that other people know exactly where you are. Look, they could potentially shoot you and someone has seen you within their vision range. And that is where you can use this kind of information to perform much better within the game and definitely something you should be doing. Then of course we have steady aim which is literally just a 10% increase to your accuracy. Flat out amazing. One of the best things that you can put on as the fourth slot and then as you kind of move through the slots it becomes more kind of dependent on the tank that you're playing but for a general case I usually use snapshot. Um, if I've got a turret on a tank if you don't have a turret don't use snapshot because you don't have a turret so it's not going to do anything uh, and then situational awareness to boost up some view range and then I typically use camo perks because I find that that just helps me out in general and so combine all of these together you'll definitely be able to have some good results and hopefully that is what you want. The final thing that I want to talk about is the idea of premium time and premium and paying to win. Now a lot of the times, yes, pay to win is certainly a thing within World of Tanks where you can essentially pay for a better tank than if you were to grind the tech tree. But I see a lot of people going straight in and they buy a premium tank without really understanding the core game mechanics and just kind of skipping ahead to tier 8. Now this is something that you probably shouldn't do if you are kind of a player or you're trying to learn the game because ultimately when you skip to tier 8 or maybe you're fairly average at the game and you're playing tier 8 all of the time you should really be learning the game and down at tier 6 and tier 7 this is where it kind of becomes quite nice to learn things because you're coming up against people that are kind of learning the game as well and also you can use the equipment to your benefit and down at tier 6 most people don't have silver and equipment on their kind of tanks to be able to boost them up and therefore you get an advantage and when you have an advantage you can use it to be able to perform better which means that you can learn the game and feel less kind of punished by a lot of the enemy team that are playing at that tier because you have the the advantage over them as opposed to them having the advantage over you when you play tier 8 so that's something I want to kind of highlight is that it's not always about let's get to the highest tier possible sometimes it's about what's going to give me the biggest opportunity to learn the game and from like tier 6 to tier 7 that's kind of the region that I would recommend. Tier 5 become is like people don't really know where to go, so it's not really applicable as you go through and learn the game. So Tier 6 to Tier 8, you know, you're not awful by playing Tier 8, but certainly playing Tier 6 and 7 will be a little bit easier for you, um, and that's certainly something I would recommend, and hopefully uh, that is something that you will do within the game, and hopefully you'll get better. The final thing is... Don't get caught up with trying to kind of perform to the highest level that you've seen other players play for from the very beginning because it's probably not going to happen. I've played 22,000 battles and only now have I really started to get a full grip of the game and being able to get four marks on things and being able to consistently three mark pretty much any tank I play um, and that really comes from playing just a ton of games and so my kind of key ending note for this video is play as much as possible in tanks that are going to be able to allow you to learn and don't get caught up if you're not playing as well as maybe you would want to and so yeah that's ultimately what this video was all about it's just trying to educate you trying to learn a couple of things and just uh, inspire you to learn because ultimately I was bad at this game at one point and hopefully you won't be as bad for as long if you even are bad at this point that you're watching this video. I don't even know. But, you know, hopefully you can increase your skill and get to somewhere where, you know, I'm at. I don't know. I'm not the best player in the world, but there we go. Hopefully it gave you some tips to get better. And of course, if you want to check out settings that will enable you to get better at the game uh, and have the optimized settings I will leave a link on screen right now and if you want to check out a how to get better series on the channel then I'll link that right now as well so you can combine them both and just get better hopefully so there we go hopefully you did enjoy this video and if you want to check out another one make sure that you click on one of those and I'll see you there goodbye